So uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here for the Rural Concerns meeting this afternoon. Uh, we have a physical quorum with six people here and then committee members wise online. I see that uh, Dwayne Baines is there as well as uh, Chris DeCubulus. And so we've got two members online. Mr. Salad is present, so there's no question about the alternative uh, the committee member being allowed to vote on that. Uh, we have, it's showing up that there's uh, one visitor online and that is uh, Memory Stewart. Memory, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, and you've been with us before, I believe, correct? Yes, I have been, but I can't join very often because I have such poor internet service. <laughs> Okay, maybe you'll get a little bit of update on that, but thanks for joining again. We have a couple of members of the public here uh, in attendance as well. Would you introduce yourselves? My name is Sherry Kluge. I'm in the Southeast Reporter. And you've been here before too. I come as often as I can. Okay. And my name is Lynn Evans. I also live in Island Grove. This is my first. Okay, so welcome uh, to, to the meeting. And uh, for the public, when we get to appropriate point, points in the meeting where there's uh, uh, input uh, needed or required or, or you'd like to make, we'll be sure and recognize you, but we'll deal with the committee to start with that, uh, to start with. So let's start off by approving the uh, agenda for today's meeting. Is there approval of approval? I'm going to approve the meeting. Okay, Jean changed to approve. Second. Larry Hall, second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes uh, unanimously. Uh, Ken, I'm going to let you go, to go ahead and do the attendance report before I make any church comments. Okay. <clears throat> let me share it up on the screen. So um, everybody's in good standing on attendance. Nobody um, is in any uh, danger of any attendance violation. If anybody has any questions about their status, they can always ask staff. And the requirement is, is here at the bottom of the screen for, for attendance. So um, it's always mailed out with the um, initial meeting RSVP email for everybody. So if you have any questions, you can always ask us. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna move on to just a couple of comments and one of them I'll go back to Ken on, but uh, I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, and Ken, will you give us a brief up, update on uh, September 13th board meeting? Okay, so the board appointed um, four new members to board new terms and two of those, two of those are current members. Um, Dr. Clouser and James Longenecker was reappointed to their positions. And we have two new members appointed. George Mells was appointed to member residing in the unincorporated area outside the urban cluster. And Jenny Ford was appointed to the member at large position. So their terms, all four of those terms begin on October 1st and run for three years. Right. And you've uh, you scheduled an orientation with them. To right, folks. we'll be in touch with them to schedule their new orientation. Okay, so the downside to that, and what I'd like to do is chair that means we have two people who's been serving on the committee and aren't coming back, and they've both been uh, faithful attenders and contributors to it. And so, uh, Jean Chance has been here in person uh, whenever possible. And when we were struggling, right, going through the worst part of coming out of COVID so we could have a few meetings and actually have votes, she was always there and, and uh, uh, has always participated. And I really appreciate it and, and want to thank you for your comments and time and thoughtfulness on the committee. And then Chris DeCubulus also uh, appears to be rotating off. And Chris, uh, before the whole COVID thing, uh, we saw him a lot in person since uh, uh, COVID, we mainly see a picture of Chris on his horse out in the woods. But Chris has been a pretty faithful attender too. And it's nice coming into these meetings and never having any questions on attendance. Uh, so I just want to say I appreciate both of you. I uh, hope 
you uh, uh, hope you enjoy whatever you're going to do next other than this and you're always welcome back and uh, your input is always appreciated so anything you want to say Jean? Well, I learned a lot and Good to work with the food committee to work with. They had a lot of challenges during COVID, and I, I think you, you've been a wonderful chairman. Thank you. Chris Decubulus, are you still there? So, Chris, I yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. I, I appreciate y'all letting me serve. Well, we, we thank you for your input, your attendance, and uh, uh, bringing up alternative viewpoints as we discuss a lot of different items. Thank you. Okay. And I see that James Longenecker has also joined us uh, online. So, uh, so we, sorry. So sorry no, no. I got stuck on a tractor. <laughs> okay. I'm That's really okay. sorry. We've got the quorum, so we can vote on a, a few things if we uh, need to. So uh, uh, that would be my uh, comments from the chair's perspective. Um, so everyone had the chance to look at the uh, minutes from the prior meeting. Is there any corrections or a motion for approval? Move to approve the minutes. Okay. 8, 16. Okay, so Jean Chance moved approval. Is there a second? Second. Second by Janet Hearns. Any discussion on that? Only those here in person can vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Okay, that passes 6 0 as well. So we're going to go back to a uh, uh, discussion we had at the last meeting. It related to this new concept that's being scheduled, uh, I believe, for a public hearing soon. It's related to a farmstead. And uh, we had a chance to see that. And we had some input that we were able to provide. And Betty is back with us today. Uh, we did get a uh, slightly modified version after we had our initial discussion. So, um, Betty, let me open up to you, and you can say anything you want. Walk through the changes, and and uh, if you want to, real quickly, and then we'll see if there's any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Dr. Chair. Um, we looked at uh, what the comments were from uh, the advisory board, and um, some of the major issues such as the access and the sanitation we've opened up, allowing more flexibility um, and keeping options open. So if you'll see with the, the subsection G um, where it says there's a allowance for either public or private roads, um, if it can meet the county standards um, and under subsection H, uh, We've left it open-ended for a unified plan for the water and the wastewater um, to meet requirements of the health department. So it's not necessarily now requiring the sanitation facility. Um, there have been citizens who have asked if they could bring uh, RVs that are self-contained um, and that might not require necessarily a sanitation facility. Okay, so if we can back up in the... Uh... Thing because I think this uh, self contained discussion um, was someplace earlier I saw. Section H. Section H. Can you scroll a little bit farther? Which way? To the top. Sure. Um, so, uh, Unserviceable IRVs are prohibited. Can you uh, enlighten us what that category is? Uh, yes, Dr. Chair, I think that was mentioned at the last uh, RCAC meeting about uh, uh, concern of having um, unserviceable RVs stay um, on, the, on the site. So this was added to that uh, subsection E so that that wouldn't be a concern that they, these would be RVs in working condition that could be removed 
um, so that we've added that into that language. Okay, so if an RV is in working condition, it can be left on the side, but if it's not, it can't be. Is that, am I understanding you correct? Right, that's correct. Okay. So other questions from the group as you see some of these changes, uh, some of them of which we discussed. What is that? Pardon? What is he? Uh, Maddie is with the planning. What's his name? Maddie. Yeah, Maddie. this is Maddie. This is Maddie Bangatar. I'm a planner with Elijah Maddie. County Growth Management. Maddie. M E H D I, I believe. And uh, I'm not even going to try on the last name. You want to try the someone want to spell that for her. Sandra Warner. And this is what department? Yeah, County Growth Management. County what? County Growth Management Department. Yes, Cindy. Um, I just, I know that we're having the Florida Agritourism Conference here on Thursday. And I know that, I think you said, we know, I know that Missy is speaking, I believe, from Growth or somebody speaking from Holly Manor. Holly Manor, yeah, because we were just talking about it before I came in here. Um, I spoke with Florida Agritourism President this morning because we're working on the schedule for Thursday. And I, he just had, uh, this is just a comment. He said that the Florida Agritourism Association has not accepted, that they're calling it clamp, camp, clamping, camping. Clamping. The, clamping. Clamping, there, whatever it's called. Clamping. Clamping, there you go. Whatever they're calling it. Um, they have not yet accepted it in the Florida Agritourism Association. So they do not have any kind of guidelines or anything on it. And so this is, as far as Orange County concerned, they've got to be um, ag classification, which we talked about. The property has to be ag classification. But whether or not this falls under Florida agritourism, it's not yet recognized by the state. That's just was my comment. So we'll talk about that more on Thursday. <laughs> Um, if I may, Dr. Chair, uh, we uh, earlier in our discussions on this, we envisioned that it would be similar to a bed and breakfast, but um, some citizens have asked that it could be dispersed throughout a site. So if you can have the analogy of a bed and breakfast, instead of five rooms in one bed and breakfast, they could be five sites that are dispersed on the site. So that's what we're looking at as a this is a new option for overnight accommodation, not so much um, as an agricultural use, but it could be in conjunction with an agricultural use for agritourism. Current agriculture classification. Is that required? It's either you have the agricultural zoning, or if you don't have that, then it's required to have the agricultural property. Classification for the property grade. That's under subsection A. Other comments? The other question I had. So this still allows, uh, it seems like it could have some impact depending on how the property appraiser uh, interprets it. If you've gone to more of an RV camping type area rather than a cabin, then this still would allow, and I, I need to make sure I remember this correctly. So in an ag area, an individual could have this. They could have the four there. They can only stay 180 days during the year. No more. Uh, uh, yeah, half the year would be maximum, but they could go ahead and it's allowable for them if they brought a self-contained RV and as long as it was a workable condition, they could park it there on a rental basis for, with the landowner. Without, without occupying. So it becomes a rental lot. The store. Right. This could be either as a rental 
or sorry, as a, the the owner of the property could have it there for guests to come in or a guest could bring their own RV. Right, but say the person used up their 180 days, but there's a, a snowbird coming down from the north. They've got an older model trailer, a small one. These have to be relatively small. They don't want to drive it back 750 miles, so they want to leave a place to leave it parked. It's not occupied. So there's four occupied locations, but then if a, a if you have an RV, a small one, it can be left there. You can pay the landowner rental, and that's allowed on the property. We would allow under this code four spots for RVs, not for additional RV storage, though. So, so, so this is a closed loop. When you're not occupying it, you can't park the trailer there someplace. Right. If, if someone's bringing their RV, they would be required to leave with their RV. If it's the RV supplied by the owner, property owner, that, that could stay for guests. Oh, OK. So if that's how it works, that cleared up one of the issues I had. Uh, let me see. Uh, James Longenecker, you had quite a few comments last time. Do you have anything you want to ask? It, it looks, I mean, I'm not sure how many iterations of this we want to do. I think that um, it looks relatively good. Any other questions? Uh, Let's scroll down one more time from the top and make sure everybody noticed the changes again. Okay, so they've got the property appraiser uh, correct in there. Uh, we've heard explained what the definition of serviceable uh, RVs are. Unserviceable ones aren't per are prohibited. Uh, we've addressed the road issue as long as it meets county standards. Uh, They've done some clarification on the water distribution and uh, wastewater disposal. Uh, and so it looks to me like uh, several of the suggestions we made have, were considered or incorporated. Uh, just any last questions? Let me just ask, uh, because we're not gonna vote on this again, but uh, 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 is, is there any questions from the public who are present? Regarding this, I have a question. Yes, Ms. Warren. Um, who, who has approved this whole idea? Teddy, do you want to talk about the process for public hearings? Okay. Yeah, so this uh, is a, a text amendment to the Unified Land Development Code, which requires two public hearings. We have it set for the agenda for next week on September 27th during the daytime. Um, the county commission can uh, still make changes to the code. Um, and after that, there's an, a second required meeting, which we're tentatively scheduling for October 25th in the evening. And that would be the final hearing for the ordinance. And I think maybe Ms. Werner uh, would like a little bit more explanation. I think we got a short one last time, but I think she's sort of asking who was the genesis for this? Is it some producers who got space or was it a concept that other counties are doing it and planning staff saw it and growth management staff saw it and they said, why don't we do this? Can you uh, give us any insight on that again? We've had a few citizens who have approached the uh, growth management office asking about uh, what the options are for overnight accommodation in the rural areas of the county. Um, and, and we've mentioned what they are with the, there's a, you know, RV parks and campgrounds, but that's required with the tourist entertainment land use and uh, RM1 uh, zoning. Uh, there's also the uh, rural event center that has an option for overnight accommodation. And then we have the standard bed and breakfast, which is allowed in ag zoning. Um, this would fulfill 
a need for people who are looking to supplement their farms with additional income from overnight accommodation, but it's limited, it's on a limited scale, only up to four units because there was a threshold of five and above uh, that would be considered an RV park or campground from the state. Is there a limited, is there a limited number of acreage that would be required before you'd be allowed to do that? We've got it set as a minimum of five acres. We initially had 10 uh, acres as a minimum, but the county commission um, seemed to favor uh, lowering that to five acres at the first meeting we had um, in uh, June. Mm -hmm. Yes, question from the public. Um, so the minimum lot size is five acres for per RV or for four RVs? Four units. Four units. That would be a, a total for all four units would be five acres for this farm stay use. Probably not going to be zoned agriculture. So it probably is not going to, I mean, how is it going to be zoned agriculture when you've got five acres and it's it's hard to get agricultural use on five acres. It can be blueberries or trees or something like that. You're not, not many livestock, it's goats maybe. Right. But then if they're, if you require an acre per camper or per campsite, whatever this is, uh, RV site, I'm not sure how much agricultural will be in and around that. But I, I don't think the regulations are probably Four units on, on the five acres. Plus, so, so then you might have four acres left for the ag right, side. right. And, and actually, in some ways, what they're doing with the water and uh, uh, waste disposal sort of makes that uh, more of a clustering approach uh, appropriate. Just think of And under C, it says the owner of the farm. I have a board. Jason, so they can be on a separate parcel. Piece of property parks just have mm -hmm. Right. Uh, did we have somebody from the committee online who had a question? Yeah, so so I'm just trying to get some clarity. So with the, so it have to be five acres um, of commercial or just five acres? That would be five acres for the parcel. Total parcel, so it don't it doesn't have it doesn't have to be like an egg or anything like that. It's a five acre parcel. It would be required to be five acres. However, if it does not have agricultural zoning, then those other uh, districts that you see RE RE one R one A, um, et cetera, you would need a bona fide. Uh, ag use and you'd need the ag classification from the property appraiser. Um, the county commission favored expanding because they recognized there could be legitimate farms that don't have ag zoning. Um, so they uh, asked for that to be expanded. Okay, okay. I just want to for Okay, any other questions from the committee members online? Okay, if not, Betty, we appreciate you coming back. And uh, I, I think on behalf of the committee, I really appreciate you getting with us before this got out for the first public hearing, uh, listening to our input, which we offered quite a bit last time. And it's very satisfying, I think, for the group to see that some of that was heard. Mr. Chair, the committee in their motion asked for this to be after the first public hearing and for the second. Okay, so we'll get to hear one more time and we'll get some feedback on what the input was during the hearing. Uh, Larry? Would it be appropriate for the commission to know that we have reviewed the amendments and uh, have members of the conference with them? Uh, I think it would be. I bet he can speak to it, but I believe that's going to be included in the presentation for the, the, the committee reviewed it, was generally in favor of it. And, and providing comments, and some have been incorporated. 
Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question, but uh, we are including the, uh, the questions um, and uh, comments from the August meeting in the agenda backup uh, for next week's meeting at the board. Okay, if nothing else, we thank you for your time again. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we're gonna to move to the next item. We've tentatively uh, already given uh, approval of it, but uh, we're gonna do a quick review of the uh, final rule concerns of item committee work plan for 2023. I'll turn that over to Ken for that. All right. Um, get it on the screen. So here is the looking at the draft mark. Uh, maybe I have a different version. So. Um, well, I don't. That's the one. So, yeah, this it shouldn't. I'm sorry about that. It shouldn't say draft. This is the version that was approved with revisions incorporated by the committee at the August meeting. So, um, the version the version that the committee approved had the underlying strike through. So, this has all been incorporated in the same copy now. It was emailed out. Is there copies here today? Or two? Yeah. So everybody should have a paper copy that you can review and just um, for a final review of the same copy, including um, today, August, and today's meeting on the second page list of meetings. Regarding the farm stay discussion. It's so on the, uh, the bottom of page two that we only made one recommendation to the board last year. Yeah. I thought we done more, but I couldn't think of it. That's good, right? There was one letter, letter to the county commission last year. Naming of the arena. Pinkerson. Is it just that our recommendations went through the county staff rather than actually written down letters? There was the, the recommendation, well, the, the motion on the farm stay was general approval with questions and comments to staff. So that was, that was given to staff. And as Betty said, staff is going to include those questions and comments in their material to the board for that farm state item, but there was no formal recommendation to the board by the committee. Well, and I, I think that might be appropriate to discuss after the first hearing, if we want to, before they go into the second one. But I, I'm thinking uh, personally, uh, I think it's good when we get the opportunity like this and if we can formally say we've had a chance to review and consider it and, and we're generally in favor of it, I think we should let the board know that. I, th I think the thing that, that we miss a lot out on is we don't go with the board a lot at formal recommendations, but we've had a lot of staff in on a lot of different topics, and we've made a lot of suggestions as it related to the broadband. And, you know, we've given them to Cindy, uh, we've had Tommy in uh, uh, talk to us because he's heading that committee, right? So, you know, I think informally, uh, we just need to not short sell ourselves that we're viewing stuff uh, that we think is important or we've been asked to review and we are provided comments. Yeah, and those are listed in these, this list of meetings, the discussions that were had and who the, the guests were. Yeah, it's just, uh, we've got the presentations 
and sometimes it's uh, it, you know uh, provided the input. Sometimes the input's pretty minimal. Sometimes the input is pretty simple. So, yeah. but I think that's what we've done a lot of. Yeah, generally that last category at the bottom of two made recommendations to board of county commissioners. That's where the, the committee authorizes the chair to send a formal letter to the county commission signed by the chair. And I, and I think it's a valid point, but I think this farm stay since we spent a couple of meetings on it, we made significant suggestions and a lot of them have been in, in considered or incorporated and I think it might be appropriate to send a more formal letter. But I think it's probably also good to hear what type of comments they get uh, yeah. uh, at the first meeting because they may come back with the staff with some additional changes we may want to look at it and agree or not agree. Good point. Yes, Ms. Warner? And I understand if this committee is in favor of the farm stay. No, we haven't decided that yet. I have. <laughs> well, when it comes up for vote, if it comes up for vote, you uh, you, you can make that uh, opinion known. Right now, all we've been do, uh, done is ask to provide input before they go to the first public hearing. You see, my property value is going down because I'm going to run all over across the street from me. <clears throat> So we need a motion to approve the annual report. It's already it's been approved. approved. It's just the Board of Development check to make sure it's I think it is based on the provisions from last time. There was a motion to approve. If everybody's good with, with what's the one thing that probably wasn't completely captured in August was the list of meetings, today's meeting, how it's been summarized in a list. The other should be for me for what the committee wanted in their last in the last meeting. So do we need to review this anymore? Can we move on to the next topic? Any last questions? If not, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next topic which would be an update from Cindy on what's happening with the broadband planning team. So I uh, pulled up my minutes here, but the last month was canceled. Our chair now of this broadband committee is Armand Lowry, and he is the project manor, manager and finance administration for the city of Newberry. Um, so I guess, um, I guess they kind of, turned it over to him to step up and chair the meetings. Who turned it over? Um, did Mark? Uh, did the county? Um, <laughs> I just had a blank. Our OMB director. OMB. Tommy, thank you. <laughs> Tommy Crosby yeah. um, put it, the group all together. And now he's kind of appointed Armand as the chair. Or Armand maybe... Stepped on to be the chair. Yeah, for the city of New Mary. So our next meeting is this Thursday, which is going to coincide with our tourist um, conference going on here, agritourism. So I'm not going to be able to be at the next meeting this Thursday. I can tell you what is on the agenda, and it, they are looking now for letters of support. Um, and then the agenda is going to be. Um, they're going to go over the planning toolkit, which is out there by the Department of Economic Opportunity, which Department of Economic Opportunity is the one overseeing this. Um, they're looking for letters of support and the completion of the surveys. We still have not received all the data back from the surveys that were supposedly sent out and everybody did. Um, there was questions about some people not being able to do the surveys because they did not have internet at all. That's the whole issue. Um, so they were they were allowing them to come into places to do or, or use their phones, but then there was issues with phones. <laughs> so, so anyway, we still have not gotten the data back. back so we're waiting for the data um, to see what it said, which we pretty much know what it's going to say. Um, 
So, because a lot of people couldn't even do it. Um, so that's our agenda for Thursday. Um, the uh, consultant that the, this the county has hired um, is gonna put all that data together and um, he should report on that on Thursday. So that's all that I have. I, there is a PowerPoint presentation um, on the Florida or the broadband planning toolkit on floridajobs.org that was presented at our last meeting and that was presented by Florida Office of Broadband, which was Kiwanis Curry. And she has been president, present at several of our meetings. We've only had maybe three meetings, I think, because last month was canceled. So. so is there any indication of what the direction or completion or outcome so it is going to be like in this committee? This consultant is going to put together the, and I've got the the PowerPoint here for the broadband planning toolkit. And I think we're in the process now. We've engaged stakeholders. We've assembled the team. Um, we're looking at industry sector participation through letters of support. Um, the next step is to identify community priorities and then also harness the data, which we're doing now. And then uh, conclusion, which will, we will review the resources and infrastructure, trying to engage local internet service providers. As many of you probably have seen, the governor has given some money for broadband to some rural areas within the three counties that, or four counties that this is working with, Alachua, Gilchrist, Bradford, and Gilchrist are the four counties that's working together on this. Bradford, Gilchrist, Alachua, and... and Bradford, is it Dixie? Hill, Chris, Levy backed out. Yeah, Levy was originally in it. They backed out. Levy, Hill, Chris, I mean, I don't think is on it. Union. 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 That's the four counties involved. So that's basically all I have. Our last meeting lasted all of about 10 minutes. Okay. Any, any It seems like it's sort of moving along slowly. Very slowly, because we don't even have the data back yet. And, uh, other than grant funds that are available, uh, mm -hmm. I assume that's where they're, that's where they're going. focused. Yeah, on that's where they're focused. Mm -hmm. But they want to get partners like Clay Electric, the co op, Florida, is it Florida, North Florida co op to the west of us? They want to get, and um, what's the other electric company in down around McAnafee? Um, or do, do, do they, they want to try to get them as partners? So that's what they're working on now is letters of support. Is letters of support also online? Um, no, he sent us out the letters of support that we could forward on to those companies. Um, but I really think Armand has sent those out on behalf of our committee. So yeah, he sent us a copy or an example of the letters of support. Letters of support. And here is the letter. Um, and it opens all and read it to you. But you need to get a couple of printouts of that or so you can make copies for the ones that haven't received it. I can. And then this goes back to Jim, who's the consultant for this for this project. He's going to write the grant. So, so the supports just in terms that it's urgent and necessary exactly. and stuff like that. There's yeah. no financial no commitment no from no. any of the private no sector. Money. So there's no problem that. But I can. What I can do is I will email this letter of support to staff, and you can get it out to the public. Okay. I guess it's for public. So I guess I just I'm concerned about my turn, but um, I don't fully understand what the letter of support is for. I mean, I mean, from go to well, I'm not sure I can send this out. I'll ask Armand if I could send this out. It's not opening on my phone, but it says hello to participants of the broadband initiative. Please see the attached letter of support. Complete the documents and return from businesses and return it to Jim Woodward ASAP. And this was sent um. Last Wednesday. 
So, uh, I'm assuming yes. Mm -hmm. And cities. So, so, so we know if he is actually always on our committee, on our meetings. Um, city of Waldo is usually there. Um, so the cities have been very involved. The other people that are involved already are school boards, um, yeah. county governments of all those counties, um, and um, some cities. So we're going to be incorporating, right? Not that. You know, I'm just regarding the problem and everything, but it's, they kind of have their own infrastructure. And so, um, is there anything done in appropriated areas to be doing the consumers there or not? Things like that? Yeah, um, I think right now they're looking for input, input from that survey. And then what I can do is I'll send this letter. Let me just ask Armand if I can send it out publicly. I think I can. I mean, we are not a um committee that is sunshine so i think i could send it out yeah. we're not under sunshine with this committee right this committee i know but, but not this broadband committee. so i think i could send it out <laughs> i'm just making sure i'm right yeah. i'm gonna reply to him and ask him if i can send it out to um the rural areas but a lot of the double uh, of this data that we're reading on was what they were trying to get from the public. Yep. Right. And, and it was, like she said, it was humans because people mm -hmm. can't get online, right. can't do the survey. So um, there were some paper surveys that people pulled on. Did you get a big one? I don't know. Yeah. Even yeah. Could, you, could you all speak into the microphone so we can hear? Please. So basically, uh, the discussion has been uh, a possibility of getting the letter from the person who's chairing the committee that went to the private sector, and also about getting the update on the data collection that was trying to occur more in the public and individual sectors. And so we'll have that Thursday. All the data that's collected. They're supposed to present that on Thursday. I will not be there, but I will get it to make sure I have it for the next meeting. Because I'll be here at our tourist agritourism. So I guess if we had to do a summary, it's moving, but it's moving along slowly. Go ahead. You're using like I look for. These are being utilized. Um, I think they're yeah they're looking at all federal grants, but mainly they're looking at the the big federal dollars that are fixing to come down. Um, but I think it's the same some of the same money that we're looking on some other grants for the county, um, and I believe those are due. I want to say next year, when the grants due. But I think this planning process, by the end of the year, we have to have all our data in and the scope of project and that kind of thing by the end of by the end of this fiscal year. Bottom line is there's been a consultant that's been hired by the county, exactly. yes. Alaska County, yes. who will prepare the grant proposal for submission for uh, the federal dollars. Correct. And right. they will do all the grant searching and all that. This consultant and his name is. I think I had it just a minute ago. I just want to make sure that we're getting everyone. And if there's things that we need to be doing out in our region, you know, like who do I send? Even if it's the Department of Commerce that will allow the one being able to write the grant. Um, and then, you know, there's obviously that big USDA, mm -hmm. you know, grant that's out there. But like, can we make this easier by getting money? Um, you would be more than welcome to send that to Armand and I can send you his contact. Um, like I said, he's the chair of our broadband committee now. Okay. And he's the finance director in New Delhi. Okay. I'll send it to him. I'll send it to Karen. 
Okay, any uh, any committee members online that want to add to that discussion? Just one more thing about the survey. Yes. The one that got sent out last week and you should have it gathered by Thursday. Is that what? Oh no, this is the survey that's been out there for a month, a couple months. Okay. Oh, okay. When did the county? June, May, that's been out there a long time. Now, I'm assuming that's all the test results that they got were reported for that. Exactly. Uh, where you looked at your strength and all that, and you logged in wherever your home is located. Um, can you repeat the name of the consultant again? Um, I'll look up his name. But the chair of our committee right now is Armand from the city of Newberry. Okay, are there any computer engineers working on this? Yes. Is there any like expert opinion? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> technical expert opinions. Yes, we have a lot of those on this committee. Like I said, there's four counties combined and there's people from um, North Florida Co-op, like I said, electrical company, all the way to school board members to government officials. Yeah, I guess I just mean like, <clears throat> yeah, the, the companies have a certain bias. I wonder if there's uh, some sort of like computer engineer or... Uh, I'm sure that they will bring in an engineer or I'm sure that our consultant will bring in an engineer. Okay. I just sent that to you. Yeah. The consultancy? Well, Armand's for letters of support. And then the consultant, hold on, I'll get you this one. So I will just, whatever Cindy sends me, I will send out to just the full and to the citizens that are here today. Jim Woodward, Woodard is the consultant. And do you know the company or firm or location? Um, okay, yes. Yeah, so I think he's in, he's in Tallahassee. Yeah. Tallahassee. Yep. Okay, so we'll have that out, and uh, Ken will get that distributed, and he'll get it uh, distributed if he has a method and has an email address or, or something. He can send it to you at if you've got internet connectivity. Okay, and do you have Miss Stewart's as well? I have Sherry's. Mm -hmm. I don't know the yeah, yeah. We have it in our sign in. Okay, yeah. whoever's I have. Okay. I have a question. Yes. This is Memory Stewart. I always have questions. I'm a mm -hmm. retired librarian. That's what we do. Uh, two questions. One is um, when and where will the meeting on Thursday be? Held? It's not open to the public that I know of. So oh, it's not. No, ma'am, it's not a public, I don't think, because we never have anybody from the public. We just always have whoever's on the committee that they invite. And the second question is Will this group ever meet anywhere else other than out there in near Newberry? I am disabled and it's a long drive there and back, and then the length of the meeting, but I'm very interested. You, uh, are you talking about the rural concerns group? or the, Yeah. Okay, so uh, the way we have it structured now is uh, once a quarter, we try to meet uh, a more central location, and we've been, ewing, been using uh, uh, the alternative space in the county administration building downtown. And technically, October would have been the meeting to do that, but there's a conflict in no, the county. It will, be. it will be downtown in October. So we, uh, we've done that. And then as we uh, find spaces uh, that are available, like I just happened to pass on a space uh, to Ken might be suitable sometime. That would be more central uh, to uh, Gainesville than it would uh, 
on either the far uh, western or east eastern portions. Uh, and we looked at a lot of different sites. Uh, we got to consider a couple of things. Uh, the technology that's available, how much has to be hauled from uh, the county and the county staff because they spend a huge amount of time doing this and getting all coordinated and all, all those type things. So we're trying to do it where we can get the technology without putting additional uh, strain on the staff of set up and tear down and making mm -hmm. sure everything works. The libraries have really good meeting rooms with the technology available. And I believe uh, uh, we looked at several different locations uh, all over uh, the Gainesville area uh, for that, uh, both on the east and west side of town. And uh, we came up with a pretty good list of possible locations and sort of narrowed it down. But we did uh, want to move it so that it was more centrally located at least every quarter. Thank you. It's a meeting schedule right now. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, so moving on. Uh, I'll just say one more thing. Yeah, so maybe Ken would contact Armand now that you've got his information. Since I'm not going to be at this meeting on Thursday where they're supposed to present the data, maybe we have Armand come here at one of our meetings to present it since I'm going to be absent Thursday. Well, and that goes right in the next one because. Uh, since we have the plan of work approved and there's some fresh ideas and concepts on people's mind, possible agenda topics for uh, October and November. And our plan was that in December uh, would be, uh, we would not hold a meeting in December. So we've got two months to plan. We've got a new year we're going into. We'll have new committee members. So now would be a good time to have that discussion if there's a high priority. And obviously it's been brought up that this one can be uh, one of them. So I just flashed on the screen our schedule through the end of this year. So as we said, we'll be at the county admin building next month on October 18th. And we should elect annual officers for the bylaws at that meeting. Um, as one of the agenda items. Then we'll be back here November 15th, extension office. Thanksgiving not till the 24th, so it shouldn't be a conflict there. And then no meeting in December. Right. Because our normal meeting, I remember, it, it seems to me like it's scheduled that week. It falls within five or seven days. Preceding. It would have been December 21. 21. 20, so we've been within five days of Christmas. And I think with school's out and people gone and focusing on the holiday, uh, it was a conclusion of the group, and I believe it was unanimous that we might try to meet uh, since it was so close to Christmas. So suggestions. So we've got the broadband as a possible topic that we have a discussion on. So let me start online. James, you got any ideas, uh, any things that you would like to have burning discussions on in the next couple of meetings? I'm going to take a look at our um, at this document that Ken just pulled up real quick. Okay. And the other one I'd just like to add to the list of broadband, I think we ought to get an update after the first public hearing on the state location for the ag areas. Right. So we, there, there's a couple of items there that we could get because our they're going to have the hearing later this month, her hearing. Right. Yeah. So we I want to. Okay, uh, Dwayne. Yeah, um, like just birth, like topics. I remember we had took a list, um, of different things, like far as like what the committee was going to focus on. Um, you know, I guess I like to revisit that list to see if we've been, you know, what all we still need to work on, and far as like. You know what else? You know, far as get done for this year, what goals that we had set? Um, I'm not sure if y'all you remember the list that I'm talking about. Where we talking about like uh, I think it was kind of like with the different um, like EMT, like Wi-Fi. I know we've been working with but talking about the the internet and stuff like that, but I know it was more than that on the list. 
Right, so under the three pillars we have in the plan of work, we sort of have the topics there that we've identified that are still of interest to the committee. Okay. And what, what those three are, I know it was the internet, but, but I thought the list was longer than just those three. I was just kind of curious. So, uh, you know, the, the three tiers, there's rural health and other county service deliveries. There was one that was related to economic development. Mm -hmm. and, and then the third one was uh, related to rural policy concerns that were coming up uh, and related to ag and rural areas. Oh, okay. Because I know we've been, like you say, we've been talking about, you know, pretty much like even like the person that was on today talked about, you know, ag with the, um, with the RVs and stuff like that. And far, I know we've been discussing about the, the internet um, in the rural community. So I was just trying to make sure we just kind of stay on top of that. Yeah, so Larry, you had a clarification. We had a, a list of possible topics, like it, maybe it was last year, that people had suggested. I think that's the one he's referring oh, okay. to. I haven't seen yeah, it. yeah, that's the one I'm referring to. We have the other potential concerns include lists at the end that are not in the three categories. Maybe, maybe that's the list. But it has um, it has been a year since we talked to the county about the micro grants for agriculture. Um, right, was Sean included in his group? Yeah, um, I wonder. I know that we got a. I'm pretty sure we got a brief update on how that went. Um, but I wonder, it, this is maybe more of an email than a meeting. I yeah, we, we, could... we did have one update because uh, Sean reported they got 37 grant applications. Yeah. So right. They got and her grants request. Just, I, ju I guess I'm just curious if they're going to do that again, since it seems to have been a um, successful pilot. And so I'm on that committee with Sean and Deidre, and nothing has been said about that because I'm with you. I was just thinking about the other day when those applications would be due, and I haven't heard anything. So maybe staff could check with Sean. Well, and I, I, I know I talked to Sean briefly at the dedication mm -hmm. or out here, and he was seemed very gun ho with that, that and uh, they got such a high amount of interest that uh, he would like to definitely keep that going. But I think some of the issue becomes, you know, how many, what size, you know, where's the funds come from and stuff like that. But uh, that could be a possible asking him to update since they had such a huge request for uh, people who applied for those, uh, what the process is going forward, if they were gonna continue it. Yeah, maybe if, if we just had the, data to review before next meeting, maybe we could make a recommendation if based on a budget um, that they might have allocated. Okay, can you go on and scroll down the list a little bit further? Can That's the bottom, I can scroll back up. Okay. Um, So um, it's quite common in other counties that the Ag Law Enforcement Officers uh, give updates occasionally on what they're seeing and what their concerns are and staffing issues or different things like that. Is there any interest in, because Alaska County still has people that has signed that responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. They have two. We had Perry come in. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's probably due. Well, it, it, it tends to become a bigger issue as your your local area grows, and a lot of the concerns are dumping, you know, in, in rural areas, uh, 
There's some issues with theft now and then, vandalism, different things like that. But it's interesting to see if those trends are going up and down, you know, if staffing is adequate and appropriate to cover those. Uh, because we all hear the story of your uh, truck overturn and the cow got loose on I-75 and they try to get some folks together and last one. You know, we hear that one. But uh, I, it seems to me it's been a while since we've heard any report on any uh, problems with law enforcement, vandalism, damage, dumping, and stuff like that in the rural areas of that county. Larry? One of the things that I was thinking about, I don't know how practically we could do it. We, as supposedly representatives of the citizens of the rural areas, do we really have a good idea of what are the concerns of those folks? Would there be any way that we could get a questionnaire of some kind that maybe could be circulated somehow so that we could see what are the top five important issues that the county should address for you as a rural property owner or farmer, et cetera? I don't know how we do that. If it's a budget for that, that was something I was thinking about. Maybe get more input directly from the people we're supposed to represent. Right. So I'll give you my two cents on it. So you can do an online survey at a relatively pretty simple cost. And probably uh, some of the questions could, uh, could uh, be put together by this group. Uh, you would have to get it out. People would have to have access if they, uh, you know, internet and stuff like that. That makes it difficult. Uh, the other uh, issue with it is if you try to do a mail survey, the cost becomes so yeah. great. Uh, that uh, I don't think there's going to be any, any uh, budget for that. There is an alternative type approach, uh, and it would fall generically under something that research-wise might be called focus groups. But, uh, you know, if this committee really thought it was uh, worthwhile, you could identify, you know, uh, over a couple of meetings, where you could set up a panel of people that would be representative. So you may get people from rural areas, you may get some ag producers, you know, you may get people in the farmer's market, ag tourism, and sort of see uh, after you meet with them that they come up and that's them coming to you and spending time doing that. So there are some alternatives. Yes, do you have some input? Um, yeah, so there are a couple of areas where I think that would be great specifically in the Hawthorne and Southeastern region one. The food pantry would be fantastic for that because these are the most vulnerable people in Washington County. Um, another uh, potential area in the tractor supply on 301 and Hawthorne, if we have anybody who's willing to collect the data, we may just sit under a tent and do a survey. Um, I think that something I think that's a great idea and probably one of the best ways to fill out the purpose of these communities. In terms of getting like actual input from the residents of these regions. Cindy. Well, Jean, go ahead. Go ahead, Jean. One of my major frustrations why I've been applying to be reappointed was that we are sitting at the table and out there and over there learn a lot. I was hoping. You would apply. For example, I did it because I am actually on so many different boards that yeah. maybe lower me in Hawthorne. So, but, I, mean, but I think Mary's suggestion is a, is a very good one mm -hmm. that you know, think about where you live, how you live. I am basically interested in. The youth program, 4 H courses are considered a hobby, essentially by this county. So I'm not sure exactly who would do what to represent. I know my neighbors, me, are being crowded out because we are in the urban fringe. And so when I'm asked, well, where do I live? I don't really live in a large town. I live 
in really what is West Gainesville. And I don't think there's really any input that I'm going to provide this county commission other than election time when somebody who represents our little group of precinct, my precinct got moved, for example, from the Baptist Church at the corner of 39 and 241 to the Baptist Church in Forest Grove. Well, I'm old enough that I don't need to go to the poll to vote. I can do the vote by mail. But I'm not sure that that's not something that somebody, for example, who is my age, 84, or handicapped, mm -hmm. who made that decision to move precinct 49 people way northwest. So there are things that we are, that I do think this group needs input and we need to get it translated to where the power line mm -hmm. and the county coordinates mm -hmm. and the elected county officials. It doesn't necessarily mean it's just the county official. But I think Cindy's got a better idea about rural concerns. I think somebody from the Bureau, Larry from the Mark Reddit group. And I think I, I have felt for some time COVID didn't help this community practice. But meeting a bare quorum, we get good information input, and then where does it go? It happens. So I was just, I was going to say. So like groups that affect the rural areas, the Alaska County Catalans. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I'm a member of all these, but I don't know if two of us could, we can't go, I don't know if we can't send a tent out two of us mm -hmm. to do a survey, because we're going to say the sunshine rules prohibits uh, us a lot. Prohibit us from going to, you know, the car grocery store and setting up right. a tent and getting some input. But or maybe Dr. Sunshine. Clouser is our chair, I don't know, can he go, I'll be at the Cowboys meeting, but can he go to the Cowboys meeting, that's next week. We got our bureau annual meeting on October 11th about San Fernando mm -hmm. Ranch. We got the farm credit meeting is going to be here in November. Let me Jason tell me Thursday, November 3rd will be here with all the farm credits. Um, there'll be 400 people at the farm bureau meeting. Um, there'll probably be 200 here at farm credit or more. <laughs> yeah, the farm credit does. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. Is there a way we could? Have a survey available at those programs, or or Dr. Claus would be there and stand up and say, you know, we represent the Alaska County. A lot of those people don't even know we're here, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. I, that's a question for you or Ken. The legalities of that, with several of us there at the same time. Well, if, if several members of the committee are planning to be somewhere like the Agritourism Conference, you know, we've noticed that that. Potential is there, so that's covered. That's covered by that notice for Sunshine Law. But what about like these private entities, like Farm Credit or Farm Bureau Cattlemen's, which maybe me and somebody else is a member of, that we go as members of those associations? I don't and know. speak on behalf of this. Community. Yeah. I mean, as far as Sunshine. Uh, as long as there's not more than one member of this committee there, then there's not a sunshine law issue. It's like a farm credit. I'm sure you can And I'm going to be here. It's going to be here. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, th I, I think the issue you run into with the uh, being a county, uh, uh, an arm of the county government is that the sunshine law. I, I, I think anybody, any of those groups, if they thought it was important enough, 
could send a note saying, we'd really like to know about the Rural Concerns Committee and can someone come and talk to us? And I think, you know, within reason, a person could try to do that. I still think you're gonna to have to do the notice because there might be something that comes up. Um, I, I just happen to be working for the university some now on a large project in Miami-Dade County and they're concerned with their ag area down there. And uh, we did a large study down there in 2002. And of course, they've got the winter festivals and row crops. They've got the tropical fruits. Uh, the ornamental horticulture industry is humongous down there now and stuff like that. And in 2002, when that study was done, I can't remember, we sent out something like five or 8,000 or 10,000 surveys and we got a 10% return. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so... What we've done this time is we're going to focus groups. So we're doing invitation only. We're trying to get participation. We're trying to get representatives from all those different areas to come in and give us the input. Because, uh, you know, if you get eight or 10 tropical fruit people in, you get eight or 10 horny people in, you get eight or 10 fertilized dibblers in, or whatever it is, you glean more information in a discussion like that than you do on 10% of 10,000 surveys being sent out that cost a fortune. So I, I think there may be some ways to do it. You might have to be creative. And I, but I think it is possible if those groups really want to know or express, they can do uh, one of two things. They can always ask someone from the committee to come, or they could always ask to come to the committee and say on behalf of their membership would be possible to address what they see some of the issues are. We could schedule them for stuff like that. Uh, I, I just think because there's so many people in the groups that have more than one person showing up is pretty large. And so we'll have to do a lot of notes. But I, I'm open to that concept, Larry. The only thing that I, that I, in my opinion, these, many of these groups don't know that we exist. I, I, I don't think that anybody on credit to that exists until I got a committee and told them about it. There's nobody here that I've before from credit that I'm aware of. I've been there 10 years. Now, we have had our bureau members on here. Right, yeah. Several. Yeah. So they know, I think, I will remind them that we are here. Well, that's one of the categories for membership. Yeah, yeah they have to be a farm bureau member. Who is that person now? Um, of course, the farm bureau has eight, over 8,000 members in this county. So, uh, you know, you remember? Mm -hmm. Jane. Mm. Thanks. Um, I guess it's really deciding, and I wonder if the county people have maybe can give us some input from other committees and how they work. Um, I do think that it needs to be a consistent methodology for how we solicit opinions toward and like work plan, you know, or just like concerns for our committee. It sounds to me like um, there's a real outreach problem, like. I'm on the committee and I have a really hard time finding the minutes from the internet. I have to go to my email to find the minutes. Um, so I wonder if the county, I mean, like y'all already do so much just like facilitating these meetings, but I do think that there needs to be some sort of like public awareness campaign that this is how the county works. And that's really expensive. It's a whole other thing that I think that the county should invest in. But um, yeah, I wonder if if there's, kind of a continuous, like if there's some sort of prescribed methodology that all different um, all different um, county county advisory committees should use so that it's consistent or um, or alternatively, like are we supposed to be, I mean, I think we're we're all appointed to be kind of representatives as citizens to the different things that we do, right? Like if we're actively in ag, then maybe the idea is that we'd have a network and we'd know um, what the issues are. Like, I completely agree that for me, my issue is like a, as a food producer is that there are no young people who want to go into food production and we need like we need resources and capacity building and a lot of support for someone who's 
going to go into agriculture because it takes a really long time to learn how to do ag. So, um, so yeah, that was a lot of different things, probably like four different things, but um, I hope that it was helpful. Cindy? I'll just add, when she said that, um, so Mark Saston, our, our IPAS, or I think our county communications director, um, would he be able to, you know, he does these lots of talks, videos, would he be able to interview our chair and here's some things we've done throughout the year? I mean, I know Dr. Cosner will probably present our work plan, I assume, for the year. We used to do that. So, so our previous chair would go every year and present our work plan to the board. But maybe Mark Sexton, we could do some kind of a launch with talks and Dr. Clouser could bring up here's, you know, we've got broadband issues, we've got urban sprawl issues with our rural areas, and here's some of the things we can do. I don't I don't know. I don't have any people watch the launch with talks, but it is out there on Channel 12. <laughs> when James said that, that just reminded me of Mark Sexton, our communication. Ask. There's interest. And then we could, you know, maybe you could say, you know, if anybody has any rural issues, please email us and email staff and have it up there. It is a question where we have an issue and we don't have anybody to So we could flip that a little bit. Uh, I, I don't think it would be super cost, cost prohibitive, but we could always send out a, a note saying there is a rural concerns committee. Here's the members on it. Uh, we're always interested in what you think the most important issues are. Uh, please inform the members or, you know, if a group wanted to go ahead and try to do a survey like that and do it, you could do it like that. It might be a little bit more proactive. The danger is you, you, the tent is so big when you get into the rural area and the issues are so broad when you get into the rural area. Uh, my only concern is by sometimes just going to the commodity associations, you're gonna get the production ag side, which is very, very important, especially in terms of the economics contributions, but you're not getting some of those other issues that we hear about from time to time. And so, you know, but I, I think we could collectively get some more, but we could be probably more active and it probably wouldn't cost more than $25 uh, to send uh, uh, a note out to uh, uh, organizations that we know that are agriculturally involved or involved in rural areas and, uh, and ask and make them aware that channel your input. We're happy to hear from you and we're happy to have you in our meetings. No, yeah, I, I just think we need to be more visible in the rural area than we are 
Hey, I wonder, uh, oh, I was just going to say, I wonder if as like a little five minute piece of homework, we could all look through like, I don't know, I just typed in like rural problem, problem in the country, Alachua County. And like, I, I wonder if we could use, sorry, and I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything super relevant. I wonder if we could help the county make the digital stuff that we have available. Um, I guess just like richer, like there's so much to know. And I wonder if we could maybe work together with Mark um, and like, yeah, I don't know, like maybe there, I don't know, I doubt Mark does their social media, but if we're th thinking about different, th this huge umbrella of people trying to have communications be as broad as possible, um, I'm willing to go through like their social media stuff um, in the website. I just wonder if um, we could each take like five or 10 minutes to do that before the next meeting. The social media and Facebook and everything, that all falls under Mark. And Mark also has a listserv, which we market all of our extension programs through. So I'm very well aware of this. And if we want to put a letter out or something to his people, I'm, I'm pretty sure he would do that, market that or whatever for us. So what would the letter say? The same letter, maybe, that Dr. Foster was talking about. We can send that to all our commodity groups. That's not a problem. All of those presidents, chairs, and all that information. But she's talking about like something on social media, and that's all through Mark Sexton. But that goes to all the general public. So you, you know, I don't know how many of those live in rural areas. So I, I was looking through and a lot of stuff we talk about. So I, I, I think it's hard to locate it, but I put uh, rural concerns in, in Florida. And so some of the stuff, the rural health issues, the transportation, the road funding, the things that we're talking about are showing up there. <laughs> then it was interesting. I don't even know when I put this, but and something popped up that says issues at the rural urban influence is Florida will Florida be prepared for 2030? And it says I wrote it. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, it's got uh, land values, sustainable agriculture, natural resource and areas of conservation, uh, the growth, how we're going to do it, compactness, uh, age distribution, affordable housing. I mean, I, I think we've got a lot of ideas probably out there is just sort of getting them focused a little bit and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I think we're on some of the, I think we're on some of the concepts, but they're so huge and broad and they're not things that are answered easily or quickly. Uh, and so we're talking long, long, her uh, on, on a lot of this stuff. And Mr. Chair, staff is, we're um, consciously on the lookout for things like the home stay, you know, these topics that are kind of like coming up um, in, the, in the public realm that, that are more specific um, issues, you know, that are narrower issues like the farm stay, whatever it is like that. We're, look, we're looking for those things to bring to the committee uh, that the committee could you know, provide input on to try to narrow it down to some concrete issue that, that the county commission is looking at taking some kind of action on. So we're, we're looking for those things to bring to the committee. It's so helpful. It's really, it's really nice to have that brought to us. Thank you for doing that.
I wonder if I wonder if because things are brought to us, we don't have as much initiative to bring up things of our own. Not saying that things shouldn't be brought to us, but I wonder if like in addition to this work plan, we have some sort of like, I don't know, goals. Like we get to what we can get to. Um, but maybe maybe we we have kind of a strategic plan around like what exactly we want to like actually write about and write letters to the committee about um, or just things that we want to give feedback through county representatives um, or I guess just different forms of feedback or like we have what we want to do it's just yeah I guess just figuring out how we're going to do it as as committee members. So I, I think one of the things that has impressed me that we can do that's sort of important. So I'll, I'll give you a specific example. So when Alfred was on the committee, she talked to us a couple of times about the shift in the transportation financing vote. I've seen there's the the uh, TV ads now, and Commissioner Prizzi is on one of them. And she's talking about we've doubled the commitment to roads and blah blah blah, and we need. Uh, uh, the, uh, this additional uh, sales tax pass, okay, which is going to go to roads and stuff. So we, we've heard that they changed the distribution formula and they were going to brace it, put less emphasis on trips and more emphasis on miles, which they would hope would distribute the money out to some more uh, rural areas. So my question is, we heard that a year ago now, what's happened? You know, you said you're going to change the formula. Okay, so show us what went there last year, what went this year. Did it get accomplished or did it not get accomplished? If it didn't move far enough, how do we move it farther? Uh, you, you know, because to me, uh, in, in some ways, I think we sort of become reactive in terms of um, these are things that are coming up and we're thinking about it this way. Do you have a different opinion since you have some background with rural populations and rural areas? Or uh, like this staycation type concept, it's something that's out there that they're doing in some other places. Can we get some feedback on it before we would take it to public hearings? So I think we're sort of saying, okay, we heard what you tell us. Did you follow through? What changes did it make? You know, you didn't move the needle far enough. That's one thing. The other thing is when things pop up that we can provide in some input before it gets too far down the road. But uh, there, I, I tell you, there's a wealth of stuff we can talk about. But that's what we're doing, talking. Jan? I just wanted to say I'd be very interested in having a presentation on the road funding. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. <laughs> So we can ask, I don't know, maybe uh, the director of public works, these persons that update us on that. So to me, it's got to be a little bit more basic. We heard too much of general generalities. We changed the way we're going to finance the road system. I, I've heard them say at least on, on the news and TVs that they put more money into it. So, you know, uh, can they explain what they did, what shifts it made, what that does, and what difference does it make? Because, you know, if, if it didn't change it much, then we're not going to see any improvements. Uh, and, you know, there's a big discussion on it ongoing right now on the Parker Archer Road thing. That's a huge development. And we all know what Parker Road's right. We know what 24th Street is in the town. And we know what Archer is. It's not going to get better. I, I'd like to say something a little bit about the roads. And uh, the squeaky wheel gets the uh, something like, you know, three And I emailed um, Thomas Strong, uh, S-T-R-O-N, back in February this year, and he is uh, the rural, you know, roads uh, management. 
but he uh, sent me an email back and said that there was money funded for our you know area where I live for 2026 that they're going to repay. I would suggest anybody that wants the roads in our rural areas to take pictures and send them to me. I'm constantly taking pictures of the roads that I live off of. And there's school buses, children, etc. But if you want, you know, his name and email, I got an email every year. So this is something that you just, because you don't see the result. You know, okay, that's four years. We're going to wait till something resolves out there or anywhere. It's, it's always, always for the times. I understand that. Um, but I think it's just more annoying that people, it's so great to do an email. Professional courtesy email. Send them lots of pictures. And maybe they'll you know, One of the things I really want to understand is how the gas taxes are allocated between the city and the county. Because several years ago, I happened to catch a presentation where they were talking about reallocating, reallocating the funds in a different way. I don't think the way you're talking about now, um, but one of the commissioners at the time was, you know, advocating that the bulk of the gas taxes go to the city of Gainesville because that's where everybody uses the roads. And that's what it hurts. And only <clears throat> and only ten percent, you know, the rural roads were only used ten percent at the time. I like driving a rural road every day of my life, so you know, I was a little offended by that comment. But I, I didn't understand how the taxes are allocated. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. I know the roads are in bad shape, but I, I just, I want to know, I want to know like you do. I want to know how they can change. So is that a Tommy Crosby or is that a Ramon? So I, I think Ramon is going to tell you what they can repair when it's on the schedule. Right. I, I think the concept on how they change the formula and where it's gone and what the shifts were is somebody else. And that's got to be Tommy or it's got to be the person. Or it needs to be one of the commissioners who said that we're taking a look at this. That time of the day for unsolicited phone calls. Sorry. It's a matter of warranty. Either that or some. It's just like they're thinking people are getting ready for supper. We're going to catch them at home and start calling. So, uh, I, I, I mean, I think this is something that's hard to get. I think we probably ought to devote more time to it at the, a future meeting. But is, is there a low-hanging fruit uh, that we can get for October that is of interest to us? Uh, that would update us on something we brought up this year, whether it's be Sean on the grant or in inquiring about what shifts there have been in the road funding and, and what difference that's making and different things along those lines. I think that would be a good topic. It's interesting that I just happened to catch, uh, uh, I think he's former Commissioner Hutchison on the news last night talking about the new sales tax. Mm -hmm. But his comments were about this much about roads and about this much of wild places and public spaces. Right. <laughs> so I'm not sure the priorities are going to be too heavy on the road side, as we've seen in the past. Just my opinion. So, other comments? So I will try to. Reach out to Tommy about the Rose formula. Okay. So, so you you tell me the protocol on on it uh, and uh, how how it's appropriate. So, uh, and I don't want to give you the impression I've interacted with him on an informal basis. He wouldn't recognize me if I pass him on the street. Uh, he's obviously a wealth of information in his mind. He's got things in his head. I can't believe that he can keep straight like that, but I get numbers. Uh, you know, what I'm hunting for is we had a member of the commission that came 
and said, you got to get, we got together and we're changing the way we're distrib distributing money for road work. And we're getting away from trips and we're putting more emphasis on miles traveled. And that should shift some money to areas outside the urban area. So what happened? Who can tell us that? So do you need to ask Michelle that who's the person who can tell us that? Do you need to ask Gina a little bit lower saying who can really answer that question that they don't want to tell you? <laughs> that that <laughs> right. I, 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 that's how I would suggest you. Yes. So there was a again, the Department of Transportation states to this board was called the questionnaire or called the questionnaire grant And it was due to the fatigue to, you know, the general state that our roads are on and everybody in all the rural areas are always complaining about it. Do we go after stuff like this? And if not, why not? And if they people aren't looking at it. Who are you know, who do I say, yeah, we can this, I'll be going out with it. You know, because it's all they want to do. When I sent this email to you, to the So, Department of Transportation um, looked at a brand um, called the Safe Street and Road Department of the Treasury Grant. Um, and, you know, we're looking at it and we're like, some of it, and at least I know, flies in some way out here to our region. Um, we, Washington County, versus whoever, we go under something, if not my own. Um, you know, and if so, who do I think to say, hey, I mean, we need to because the lead comes to me like, well, there's some money, we're going to have to do that. There's some money, we're we going after that money. I mean, all I know is, you know, there's, there's the Department of Records, there's public books of record. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we would generally like, I would you say. You might it's either it's know or know where to direct you about that. There's also, there's a county grants coordinator email. Mm -hmm. Maybe that. I'll try to find out. Yeah, I just I come across this stuff in my other time. And they look like they need something new for trying to get that to the population that gets the money and you know, the sales tax or whatever because we're rural and we're spread out. So make sure we don't have to um, I know we're running long, and there's some things that I didn't want to bring up before we go. Are we approaching that? Yes, I'm a hope so uh, <laughs> that we're approaching it. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to solve the problem. I think we've got some directions on the next meeting. And so I think the roads is a big one. I think Sean is also one that we could follow up with the grants. That would we'll give follow us. Follow up with the county attorney's office on this information gathering. Idea, you know, and just see if there are there legal issues with that, or you know, the things that just need to be thought about. Yeah. Well, we just kind of get what are the concerns of the rural people? Can we first, or um, like we have to have that? Can we offer any service hours to make kids to go and sit in the tents and ask people to just fill out this car and drop it in the room? I mean, the only thing that we can do is that you know, we body, the energy, and that's the energy for our community service hours. I don't know. I mean, we haven't really had this issue come up, so I'll, I'll see if, if maybe there's legal issues and maybe not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I, to me, the turkey part becomes is this committee is a subcomponent of county government, mm -hmm. okay? And so 
Alachua County government has to be the sponsor of whatever is happening. If you're doing something under the name of the World Concerns Advisory, there's nothing stopping any of you from going out there and talking to anybody you want to. But anytime. Right. But I, I mean, the formalized process, I think, becomes tricky in government. So, um, so is there anything urgent, real, uh, by someone online so we can try to give a chance to hear these other few ideas and then maybe conclude for today? Larry, you need to go. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and throw up. Um, so the broadband opportunity that I asked about that in terms of we are going to have this news so it was going to be an update with one of you good things and then we will have the big dollars. Yeah, I mean, and if we need to, you know, like call them instead of telling them to go after little dollars for little things, I would love. You know, like I, I don't want to use, you know, being an arm that does have a, you know. I think Memory's trying to say something and she has a bad connection. What's that, Memory? Uh, can you hear me? No, not really. Can you hear me? Come on. I've had I've had my hand up for an hour and and are not getting recognized. But if you can understand me, it doesn't matter. So thank you. Yeah, we we couldn't really understand you, memory, but um, it. Thanks for bringing to our attention that we need to pay attention to the hands raised online. Um, um, I think she's done. Um, what are the uh, issues and concerns? I reached out to the board the very last year and brought it up. Um, and we got the other people out there coming to the pool as part of the Great American Camp. We have a lot of our area. A lot of our patients went to the weddings. We went out there and we did a lot of work as community members and we filled an entire dumpster. The dumpster I needed me to do was my private company and I had to work with, um, oh, I can't think of the name, he was very old, Kirby, with the county to get things picked up. We pulled over 100 tires out of the land, went in the area where people are trying to put these things they've done. And as the water goes down, you see that there's a little bit more tires. Probably, like, this is a huge concern. I know this is not unique to our area, but like, we need a better process for getting this stuff done. And the guys who come out and mow, they will just mow over there. That's something I would like for us to um, have a project or something to address. Um, Animal services, we have a huge dumping problem with animals. And whenever anybody in our region contacts um, Washington County Animal Services, we're told they're full and they can't do anything for us. <laughs> like, this is constant. I actually um, texted with Alan Wheeler and said we need to do something about this. So there was a light conversation about a satellite office. If we can get a couple of heads around it in our region. And I talked to a couple of people who are involved in other rescues. People are interested in this, but I, all of these things have been ignored for so long and they are all coming to a boiling point. And it's, I, I don't know which to tackle. I mean, I'm tackling the food and security first because people need to eat, but these are all other issues as well. I mean, people can't feed themselves, they can't feed their dogs, they don't have their dogs, they don't have their pregnant, you have litters and litters of feral dogs. My dad was attacked the other day while I was walking him. Like, and to be told that the service that's supposed to take care of this one just flat refuses is, I mean, that's not something. It's really just something. Um, 
I have plans to go to the October meeting for the IP services infrastructure. Um, Dr. Hodgson and Commissioner Pithia, I think we're going to get but you know, I, I don't want to be excited that we talk about the community in November, and our food pantry just continues to get out of hand. We're looking at this from a high level, and that's great, but we're still seeing an increased number of food pantries. There, there's no like apartment problems. There's hardly any child care. All of these things are culminating in addition to transportation barriers. And I feel like the whole United County is going to pull out by itself. It's not like the room is going to be some problem. But I don't know how how else to like bring it to you guys. Yeah, so it's really interesting. Almost every one of those issues you brought up, we've had some, we've talked about it. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and the animal shelter is an interesting one because obviously Elijah County had some difficulties. They closed down. Uh, you know, so many of the shelters have gone to the concept of non euthanizing animals, if at all possible. Uh, They've, uh, you know, we had the problem during the COVID, people were at home, so they went and got pets, and now they can't afford to take care of them, and, you know, they're, and they forget about the vet bills and stuff, and it just goes on and on and on, and, and then the issue that overall, and I have some sympathy for the commissioners, because there's a million problems, and there's X number of dollars, and so it basically comes down to an allocation method for them but every I, I i think we've literally touched on all those topics in fact i don't know how many of you were on the committee but ramon came out and talked to us once and ramon used to be director of public works in highlands county one of the most successful programs there and i may misquote the price but they did a uh, tire forgiveness program every year everybody turned in a tire at uh, some location in town they got a dollar for every tire and they returned he said they didn't have to pick up tires along the road anymore because people were out bringing them in 50, 100 at a time to get their 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, it was worthwhile to stop the pickup and throw it in the back. Yeah. So we, we've heard about innovating programs and stuff. It's just moving yeah. that step yeah. to action. Yeah. Create action items and stuff like that. Yeah. Projects. So, you know, in context. And is that like what I need to do is like take it beyond this group and just kind of well, well I, that's it. And the thing I think everybody needs to wear, and it's not always gonna be you, you everybody's afforded as long as you're reasonable three minutes to bring up anything at any commission meeting. And it's usually early on before they get into discussion of business or it's time specific at the end of the day. And one of the most effective means is, you know, just continually being there and getting up before them and saying, these are the issues and we keep addressing them, addressing, but, you know, we got a hundred and we know we can't solve a hundred, but can you tell me, if, is there a priority from the county for two? And what's the movement gonna be? And what's the, I mean, you have means to, to express to them. And we added animal services on our work plan. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's obviously a big issue. And this committee has, always has the option to discuss something and do that formal letter of recommendation. Right. Of that issue. So I think. Uh, everybody's exhausted. We've lost our quorum here in attendance, so we can't vote on anything. And if there's no objection, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Not hearing any more adjournment.